Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this couple of list of videos, we're going to be talking about how to build an app locally and then pack it up using Docker container, push it to Azure Container Registry, and then back that up using a live web app URL. So in this particular video, we're going to be talking about this step here, that is building that app and using Docker container to push it to the Azure container instance. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'm currently in a blank folder called Hello World in my VS Code. So to create a local app, I'm going to need to choose a package to create a requirements file and some sort of Docker file. For simplicity, I'm going to choose Streamlit app and I'm just going to grab one of their sample code online called EchoBot. So I search Streamlit app EchoBot. And I believe the first link will take you right there. So I'll scroll down to the middle of the page, you'll see EchoBot. And what that means is it will repeat whatever you type in. So for example, you can say blah, 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 hit enter, and it will repeat exactly what you said. And this is kind of nice because if you are familiar with this framework, uh, it will be essentially a few lines of code to turn this into an actual chatbot using OpenAI API call. And to make things more easier, sample code is provided right here. I can literally just grab the whole thing, copy paste, and I'm all set. So create a new file called app.py. I'm just going to paste the code in here. Since I'm using Streamlit app here, I need to make sure I have a requirements file that has that package inside. So when I create a Docker image, it can install the necessary dependencies that I need. So create a new file called requirements.txt. And here we just need to say Streamlit. Of course, if you need to install other packages such as TensorFlow or Torch or any fancy things like that, you need to specify the package in the requirements text file. And sometimes to resolve the dependencies and different package versions, you can, of course, type in the required versions in here as well. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use Streamlit, and that's going to install the latest version, and I'm good with that. So I have my app.py. I have my requirements.txt file. The next thing I need is a Docker file. So right-click, we're going to create a new file called Docker file with a capital letter D in the beginning. And that's it. Hit enter. Now let's get some sample code in there. Here is the sample code I typically go for with a Python 3.11. We're going to uh, set a directory in the container called app. And we're going to copy everything in there. We're going to do a pip install. And then we're going to set the core to be 8501. And this is 8501 specifically designed for Streamlit application. Uh, if you're building a Gradio app, I believe this is 7,000. Uh, if you're building Flask or other things, I believe you can use other numbers. And then uh, once you set things up, of course, in the end, you want to run the app, right? So all these commands, you want to set that up in the Docker file. And once you have this, you are all set. So this code now exists locally, right? We haven't really talked about Docker. So let's jump right into Docker. First thing you need is a Docker desktop. This assume that you have this Docker desktop downloaded locally, and you open this Docker desktop just like what I'm seeing right here. So with that being said, now you can go back to VS Code and open a terminal window. So you are right here in the Hello World directory. You can do a LS to make sure that you have all the required files. In this case, I have app.py, Docker file, my requirement.txt, and I'm all set. The first thing we want to do is to build this image. And then we want to see if we can run it locally before we push this up to the cloud. So let's do that. Docker build dash T. And then in this case, you want to give a name. So in my case, I'm just going to call it Hello World. And I put a dot there, make sure that you specify the directory. The dot just means the current directory. Hit Enter. 
you're going to see this kind of print statement. It's going to say build an image, install all the packages, things like that. And it knows to do that because of your Docker file. Now that this is done, you have this image built. Then you can run. It. So what we're going to do here is docker run dash p 8501 colon 8501 and the name of the app. In my case, I'm going to call it hello world. So this will run the app locally. And as you can see here, it will deploy this app on a local endpoint. And this is 0.0.0, .0 colon with the port number 8501. And before I do anything, let me also show you the Docker desktop. Here on Docker desktop, you can see that there's a hello world image that's been running for about 20 seconds. And this is because I just initiated this run. So if you click on this local host 8501, it will open a web browser. And boom, there you go. On this local host, you have an echo bot. And you can type in something, hi, John, and it will repeat, hi, John. So now that you know this echo bot is doing exactly what you want locally, you can then open a new terminal and push it to the container registry. Recall that previously we talked about this container registry instance that we created under access key, which is under settings tab, you can allow the admin user and then it will pop out username as well as the password. So we will be using the login server to try to initiate username and password and we'll be logging from command line interface so that we can push the image onto this Azure container instance. So let's do that. First thing you're going to do is grab the login server, copy, go to your terminal, and type in Docker login, paste the server name there. Hit enter. It will pop out the username. Now let's go grab the username. Username is basically the name of this instance. Let's copy that. Paste it there. Let's hit enter. And it will ask you for password. Let's go grab our password. Say copy. And then we're going to paste it here and hit enter. It will say login succeeded. Once you log in successfully, we're going to tag the image. Basically, there's a unique name for that image. And then we're going to Docker push the image to the Azure container instance. So let's come back to Azure. Let's grab the login server, copy that. And then let's tag it. So we're going to say Docker tag. And let's give the name, let's say, hello world. And then what we need is the login server. We're going to say slash hello world. We're going to say colon. And then my personal habit is latest and then tag the version number. So in this case, since we're doing this the very first time, we're going to call it V1, just like that. Hit enter. This will tag the image. Once you tag the image, you can now safely push the image to the Azure container instance. So the way you do that is you say Docker push, copy the login server name there, and then you want to make sure to call the correct image. In this case, I will be calling hello world, column latest, you want. And I'm going to hit enter, and I'm all set. So you wait a little bit. This command will push the artifact from local in your computer onto the container instance on Azure Cloud. So now you see that this is finished. Let's go to the Azure Cloud to verify that this action is successful. So let's go to this instance in repository, which you can find under services. Click on that. It will pop out a new repository. You can then click in there. You can see that the tag name is latest v1. And that means the previous action that we've just done is successful. Next, we're going to come back, see how to create a web-based application that's backed by this container instance. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.